Hello, history enthusiasts, time travelers, and knowledge seekers. Welcome to another journey back in time here on Backdrop History. Introduction The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are defining moments in human history, forever changing the course of warfare and marking the beginning of the nuclear age. This detailed account aims to explore the historical background, events leading up to the bombings, the bombings themselves, and their aftermath. By examining the complex factors and consequences, we hope to shed light on the immense devastation and lasting impact caused by these tragic events. Chapter 1, Historical Context, The Pacific Theater of World War II To understand the events that culminated in the use of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it is crucial to delve into the historical context of the Pacific Theater during World War II. The conflict in the Pacific was a complex and multifaceted struggle between the Allied forces, primarily led by the United States and the Empire of Japan. The Japanese military had exhibited unwavering determination and had proven to be a formidable adversary throughout the war. The Pacific War began on December 7, 1941, when Japan launched a surprise attack on the United States Pacific Fleet stationed at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. This devastating assault not only crippled the American naval forces but also marked Japan's aggressive expansion into Southeast Asia and the Pacific region. The attack on Pearl Harbor thrust the United States into a global conflict, shifting its focus from the European theater to the war in the Pacific. In the following months, Japan swiftly captured strategic territories across Southeast Asia, including the Philippines, Singapore, and parts of the Dutch East Indies. The Japanese military demonstrated remarkable tactical prowess and an ability to adapt to diverse environments, gaining a reputation for their ferocity and determination. Their advances threatened the security of British and American colonial possessions and established Japan as a dominant power in the region. The Allies, led by the United States, responded with a series of counteroffensives to halt Japan's expansion. The Pacific Theater became a critical battleground, characterized by island-hopping campaigns, amphibious assaults, and intense naval battles. Allied forces faced formidable challenges as they fought against a highly motivated and well-prepared Japanese military, who defended their conquered territories with great tenacity. One of the major turning points in the Pacific War came with the Battle of Midway in June 1942. The United States successfully repelled a Japanese naval offensive, destroying four aircraft carriers and crippling Japan's carrier-based air power. This victory marked a significant shift in momentum in favor of the Allies and demonstrated Japan's vulnerability. As the war progressed, Allied forces adopted a strategy of isolating Japanese-held islands and capturing key strategic locations. This approach aimed to neutralize Japanese airfields, cut off supply lines, and provide bases for future operations. These island-hopping campaigns, such as the battles of Guadalcanal, Tarawa, and Iwo Jima, were fiercely contested and exacted a heavy toll on both sides. By 1944, the Allies had effectively isolated Japan and commenced intense aerial bombardment campaigns, targeting Japanese cities and industrial centers. The strategic bombing campaign, led by the United States Army Air Forces, aimed to cripple Japan's war production capabilities, weaken its infrastructure, and demoralize the Japanese population. However, despite these setbacks, Japan's military leadership remained steadfast and committed to continuing the fight. The Japanese government under Emperor Hirohito, guided by a militaristic ideology and driven by a refusal to accept defeat, rejected surrender demands from the Allies. In the midst of this challenging and protracted conflict, the decision to employ atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was made. The destructive power demonstrated by these new weapons was seen as a potential means to swiftly end the war and avoid the anticipated heavy casualties that an invasion of the Japanese mainland would entail. Chapter 2, The Manhattan Project, Unlocking the Power of the Atom 
The Manhattan Project stands as one of the most remarkable scientific and engineering endeavors in human history. Initiated in 1939, this top-secret project aimed to harness the power of nuclear fission to develop an atomic weapon. Led by a team of brilliant American physicists, including J. Robert Oppenheimer, the Manhattan Project would ultimately culminate in the creation of the devastating weapons that were used in the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The roots of the Manhattan Project can be traced back to the discovery of nuclear fission by German scientists Otto Hahn and Fritz Stresemann in 1938. This breakthrough revealed the potential for releasing an enormous amount of energy by splitting the nucleus of an atom. Fearing that Germany might exploit this new knowledge to develop atomic weapons, a group of American scientists urged the U.S. government to launch its own research program. In response, President Franklin D. Roosevelt authorized the establishment of the Advisory Committee on Uranium in 1939 marking the beginning of what would become the Manhattan Project. The project was named after the Manhattan Engineer District, a military organization responsible for overseeing the research and development efforts. Under the leadership of General Leslie R. Groves, the Manhattan Project brought together the brightest scientific minds of the time, including physicists such as Oppenheimer, Enrico Fermi, Niels Bohr, and many others. The project operated across multiple sites, with the main research and development facilities located in Los Alamos, New Mexico, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Hanford, Washington. One of the primary challenges faced by the Manhattan Project was the acquisition of sufficient quantities of enriched uranium and plutonium, the key elements needed to fuel an atomic bomb. The project required massive industrial-scale production of these materials, a task that had never been attempted before. Oak Ridge became the center for uranium enrichment, employing a revolutionary method known as gaseous diffusion, as well as electromagnetic separation and thermal diffusion techniques. Hanford, on the other hand, focused on the production of plutonium through the use of nuclear reactors. While the production of fissile materials was a critical aspect of the Manhattan Project, the development of the actual bomb design was equally important. Two different approaches were pursued, the uranium-235 gun-type design and the plutonium implosion design. The former relied on shooting one subcritical piece of uranium-235 into another to create a supercritical mass, while the latter involved compressing a subcritical mass of plutonium using conventional explosives to initiate a chain reaction. The scientific and technical challenges encountered during the Manhattan Project were immense. Theoretical calculations, experimental research, and engineering innovation were conducted under conditions of extreme secrecy and intense pressure. Despite setbacks and obstacles, the project made significant progress, and by mid-1945, the first atomic bombs were ready for deployment. The completion of the atomic weapons marked a turning point in human history. The destructive power of these weapons was unparalleled, with the potential to unleash devastation on an unprecedented scale. J. Robert Oppenheimer, the scientific director of the Los Alamos Laboratory, famously remarked upon witnessing the successful Trinity nuclear test, now I am become deaf, the destroyer of worlds, recognizing the immense responsibility and moral implications of the project's achievement. On July 16, 1945, the Trinity test in New Mexico confirmed the viability of the atomic bomb, and just weeks later, on August 6, 1945, the first operational atomic bomb, codenamed Little Boy, was dropped on the city of Hiroshima. Three days later, a second bomb, Fat Man, was detonated over Nagasaki. The devastating impact of these bombings caused immense loss of life, destruction of infrastructure, and long-lasting physical and psychological effects on the survivors. Chapter 3, The Decision to Use Atomic Bombs, Weighing the Options in a Desperate War The decision to employ atomic bombs against Japan during World War II stands as one of the most controversial and consequential choices in the history of warfare. President Harry S. Truman, 
thrust into the position of making this grave decision following the death of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, faced an agonizing dilemma as the war in the Pacific raged on. Informed by military advisors and confronted with the potential loss of life in a ground invasion of Japan, Truman undertook a careful deliberation process before ultimately authorizing the use of atomic bombs. By the time Truman assumed the presidency in April 1945, the conflict in the Pacific had become a protracted and brutal campaign. Japan had exhibited fierce resistance throughout the war, leading to heavy casualties on both sides. The Japanese military, indoctrinated with the spirit of Bushido and driven by a deeply ingrained determination to fight to the death, presented a formidable obstacle to Allied victory. As the Allies sought to bring the war to a swift conclusion, they faced the prospect of a ground invasion of the Japanese mainland. This undertaking, codenamed Operation Downfall, was estimated to result in a staggering loss of life. American military planners projected casualty figures in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, for both Allied forces and the Japanese defenders. The ferocity and tenacity of Japanese resistance in previous island battles such as Iwo Jima and Okinawa offered a grim preview of the challenges that lay ahead in a full-scale invasion. In this dire context, the potential use of atomic bombs emerged as a controversial and potentially decisive factor. The Manhattan Project, a top-secret research and development endeavor, had successfully produced these devastating weapons. While the scientific and technical achievements were awe-inspiring, the ethical and strategic implications of their use were profound. President Truman found himself confronted with conflicting advice from his military advisors. Some argued that the employment of atomic bombs would hasten Japan's surrender, saving countless lives that would otherwise be lost in a protracted ground invasion. They posited that the sheer destructive power of these weapons would shock and demoralize the Japanese leadership and populace, compelling them to capitulate. Others, however, expressed concerns about the immense loss of civilian life and the long-term consequences of unleashing such devastating weaponry. Truman sought counsel from key figures such as Secretary of War Henry L. Stimson, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, and Admiral William D. Leahy, among others. These advisors presented varying perspectives on the potential use of atomic bombs, reflecting the complex moral, military, and strategic considerations at stake. Ultimately, Truman's decision to use atomic bombs was multifaceted, influenced by a combination of military, strategic, and humanitarian factors. He was mindful of the lives of American servicemen and the potential impact on the Japanese people. Truman also faced pressure to bring the war to a swift end, as prolonging the conflict could lead to further loss of life and increased strain on resources. On July 25, 1945, Truman issued the Potsdam Declaration, calling for Japan's unconditional surrender. The declaration explicitly warned of prompt and utter destruction should Japan refuse to comply. The Japanese leadership, however, remained reluctant to surrender, upholding their commitment to fight to the end. In the early morning of August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb, Little Boy, was dropped on the city of Hiroshima. The devastation was catastrophic, with an estimated 70,000 to 80,000 people killed immediately. Three days later, a second bomb, Fat Man, was detonated over Nagasaki, resulting in a similar level of destruction and loss of life. The atomic bombings had a profound impact on the Japanese leadership, who recognized the unprecedented destructive power of these weapons. Combined with the entry of the Soviet Union into the war against Japan, the bombings effectively tipped the scales and prompted Japan's unconditional surrender on August 15, 1945. The decision to use atomic bombs against Japan remains highly contentious, with intense debates continuing to this day. Critics argue that alternatives, such as a demonstration of the weapons' capabilities or continued economic and military blockade, 
could have compelled Japan's surrender without the loss of civilian life. Proponents, on the other hand, contend that the bombings expedited the end of the war and averted the necessity of a prolonged and costly invasion. Chapter 4, Hiroshima, August 6, 1945 Unleashing the Power of Destruction On the morning of August 6, 1945, a momentous event unfolded in the skies above Hiroshima, forever altering the course of history. The Enola Gay, a B-29 bomber named after the pilot's mother, embarked on a mission that would unleash a devastating force upon the city. Carrying within its belly an atomic bomb codenamed Little Boy, the aircraft soared towards its target with the weight of unprecedented destruction. At precisely 8.15 a.m., the bomb was released over Hiroshima, hurtling towards the unsuspecting city below. Little Boy was a uranium-235 gun-type bomb, designed to initiate a chain reaction by shooting one subcritical piece of uranium-235 into another, forming a supercritical mass. The resultant explosion was equivalent to approximately 15,000 tons of TNT, with the energy released in a fraction of a second. The detonation of Little Boy unleashed an inferno of unparalleled magnitude. A blinding flash illuminated the morning sky as an intense burst of heat and radiation engulfed Hiroshima. In an instant, the lives of tens of thousands of people were tragically and irreversibly altered. The immediate effects of the atomic bomb were catastrophic. The heat generated by the explosion ignited fires that rapidly spread throughout the city, reducing buildings to rubble and consuming everything in their path. The blast wave, with its tremendous force, demolished structures, shattering glass and turning solid objects into deadly projectiles. Countless lives were snuffed out in an instant, while others suffered severe injuries and burns. Estimating the precise number of casualties is a difficult task, given the chaos and confusion that followed the bombing. However, it is estimated that between 70,000 to 80,000 people were killed instantly by the blast and the immediate effects of the bomb. Many more would succumb to their injuries in the days, weeks, and months that followed, bringing the death toll to even higher numbers. The devastation wrought upon the city of Hiroshima was profound. The blast radius encompassed an area of approximately 1.5 square miles, per square kilometers, reducing buildings to rubble and leaving behind a landscape of utter desolation. The heart of the city was obliterated, and even structures at the periphery suffered extensive damage. The iconic Hiroshima Castle, a symbol of the city's heritage, was among the many casualties, reduced to ruins. The impact of the atomic bomb extended far beyond the immediate physical destruction. The intense heat and radiation released by the explosion caused severe injuries, burns, and radiation sickness among the survivors. Many faced unimaginable suffering, experiencing the immediate and long-term effects of radiation exposure. The physical and psychological scars endured by the survivors, known as hibakusha, would mark them for the rest of their lives. In addition to the human toll, the atomic bomb's detonation inflicted immense damage on Hiroshima's infrastructure. Water mains were ruptured, hindering firefighting efforts and exacerbating the spread of fires. Communication systems were disrupted, making it difficult to coordinate rescue and relief operations. Hospitals and medical facilities, overwhelmed by the sheer number of casualties, struggled to provide adequate care to the injured. The aftermath of the bombing revealed the magnitude of the humanitarian crisis that had befallen Hiroshima. Survivors, traumatized and physically devastated, faced a daunting struggle for survival amidst the ruins of their city. The city's remaining infrastructure, including transportation networks and essential services, had been severely compromised, hindering the delivery of aid and hampering the recovery efforts. The bombing of Hiroshima on August 6, 1945, left an indelible mark on human history. It represented the first use of an atomic bomb in warfare, showcasing the unprecedented power of nuclear weapons. 
The devastation and loss of life inflicted upon Hiroshima were beyond comprehension, serving as a stark reminder of the immense destructive potential of these weapons of mass destruction. Chapter 5, Nagasaki, August 9, 1945 Unleashing Destruction Upon an Industrial City Three days after the devastating bombing of Hiroshima, another tragedy unfolded on August 9, 1945, as the United States dropped a second atomic bomb, codenamed Fat Man, on the city of Nagasaki. This industrial and port city, located on the southwestern coast of Japan's Kyushu Island, became the next target in the destructive wake of the atomic age. At 11.02 a.m., the B-29 bomber Boxcar released Fat Man, a plutonium implosion-type bomb, over the city of Nagasaki. The bomb relied on the compression of a subcritical mass of plutonium through conventional explosives, resulting in a supercritical mass that initiated a catastrophic chain reaction. The explosive force generated by Fat Man was estimated to be equivalent to approximately 21,000 tons of TNT. The impact of the detonation was devastating. A blinding flash lit up the sky, followed by a massive blast wave that radiated outward from the epicenter. The immense heat and radiation released by the explosion caused immediate and indiscriminate destruction claiming the lives of tens of thousands of people within seconds. The estimated death toll resulting from the Nagasaki bombing varies, but it is generally believed to range between 40,000 to 75,000 people. The exact number is difficult to determine due to the chaos and confusion that followed the explosion, as well as the challenges in collecting accurate data amidst the widespread devastation. The city of Nagasaki, like Hiroshima, experienced the full force of the atomic bomb's destructive power. The blast wave, moving at tremendous speed, flattened structures, reduced buildings to rubble, and turned everything in its path into debris. The city's industrial and commercial areas, including its renowned shipyards, were decimated, impacting Nagasaki's economy and livelihoods for years to come. In addition to the immediate destruction, the atomic bomb's thermal radiation caused fires to spread rapidly throughout Nagasaki. The inferno that engulfed the city added to the devastation, exacerbating the already overwhelming chaos and destruction. Firefighters, faced with the overwhelming scale of the disaster, struggled to combat the flames that consumed the shattered remnants of buildings and homes. The survivors of the Nagasaki bombing, like those in Hiroshima, endured immeasurable suffering. Many suffered severe burns, injuries, and the effects of radiation exposure. The long-term consequences of radiation sickness and other radiation-related illnesses plagued the survivors, leaving them with enduring physical and psychological scars. The Hebakusha, as they came to be known, faced stigma and discrimination, as well as ongoing health issues, for years following the bombing. The aftermath of the Nagasaki bombing mirrored that of Hiroshima. The city's infrastructure was in ruins, with communication systems severed, transportation networks disrupted, and essential services incapacitated. Rescue and relief efforts were hampered by the destruction, making it difficult to reach those in need and provide assistance in a timely manner. The surviving population faced immense challenges in securing food, water, and medical care. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, just three days apart, remain unparalleled in their destructive power and tragic consequences. The industrial city of Nagasaki, chosen as the second target for the atomic bomb, experienced devastation on a scale that is difficult to comprehend. The bombings left an indelible mark on the survivors and the city itself, serving as a haunting reminder of the devastating potential of nuclear weapons and the irreversible loss of human life. Chapter 6, Immediate and Long-Term Consequences, Unimaginable Suffering and Lasting Effects The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki unleashed a level of devastation that was beyond comprehension. The immediate aftermath of the bombings left a trail of unimaginable human suffering, forever etching the memories of the survivors, 
known as hibakusha. The physical, psychological, and environmental consequences of the bombings would continue to haunt the affected communities for generations to come. The survivors of the atomic bombings, the Hibakusha, bore witness to the horrors of the nuclear inferno. Many experienced severe injuries, burns, and trauma caused by the blast and the intense heat generated by the explosions. Those in close proximity to the epicenters of the bombings faced the greatest risks, suffering from a range of injuries, including severe burns and internal injuries caused by the pressure wave. The effects of radiation were particularly insidious and pervasive. The Hibakusha and those who entered the affected areas in the immediate aftermath of the bombings were exposed to high levels of ionizing radiation. This exposure resulted in radiation sickness, with symptoms including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, hair loss, and hemorrhaging. The severity of the symptoms varied depending on the level of exposure, with many experiencing long-term health complications and an increased risk of developing radiation-related illnesses such as cancer, leukemia, and other chronic diseases. The psychological trauma inflicted upon the survivors was equally devastating. The experiences of witnessing the destruction, the loss of loved ones, and the enduring impact of the bombings left an indelible mark on the Hibakusha. Many suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, depression, anxiety, and survivor's guilt, enduring the psychological burdens of their harrowing experiences for the rest of their lives. The environmental impact of the atomic bombings was also significant. The release of immense amounts of ionizing radiation contaminated the affected areas, causing long-term damage to the ecosystem and leaving a toxic legacy. Vegetation withered, animal populations suffered, and the land remained scarred by the catastrophic events. The lasting effects of radiation extended beyond the immediate aftermath of the bombings. The survivors and subsequent generations faced the ongoing threat of radiation-related illnesses. Studies conducted on the Hibakusha revealed increased rates of cancer, particularly leukemia, as well as higher instances of other health conditions associated with radiation exposure. The genetic effects of radiation were also a concern, with the potential for genetic mutations and hereditary impacts to be passed down to future generations. The Hibakusha, in their determination to raise awareness and advocate for peace, played a crucial role in bringing attention to the long-term consequences of the bombings. Their testimonies and activism helped to shed light on the humanitarian costs and the urgent need for nuclear disarmament. The impact of the bombings reverberated far beyond the immediate survivors. The bombing served as a chilling reminder of the destructive power of nuclear weapons and the potential for catastrophic consequences in any future use. The events of Hiroshima and Nagasaki spurred global discussions on the ethics of warfare, the arms race, and the need for international efforts to prevent the use of nuclear weapons. In the aftermath of World War II, the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki influenced international diplomacy and shaped the development of global nuclear policies. The devastation wrought by the atomic bombings highlighted the urgent necessity for arms control agreements, leading to the establishment of the United Nations and subsequent efforts to curb the proliferation of nuclear weapons. The Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons NPT, in 1968 and subsequent arms reduction agreements reflected the international community's recognition of the need to prevent the catastrophic consequences of nuclear warfare. Chapter 7, The Surrender of Japan, Confronting the Devastating Reality The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki had an indelible impact on the Japanese leadership compelling them to confront the stark reality of the devastating potential of these new weapons. Combined with the entry of the Soviet Union into the war, the bombings precipitated Japan's unconditional surrender on August 15, 1945, marking the end of World War II in the Pacific. 
The Japanese leadership, including Emperor Hirohito, had been steadfast in their determination to continue the fight, even in the face of overwhelming odds. However, the atomic bombings shattered any illusions of invincibility and presented an unprecedented level of destruction that could be inflicted upon the Japanese homeland. The sheer devastation and loss of life caused by the bombings demonstrated the immense destructive power of nuclear weapons and the impossibility of winning the war. The bombing of Hiroshima on August 6, 1945, was a profound shock to the Japanese leadership. The magnitude of the destruction, the loss of tens of thousands of lives, and the unimaginable suffering inflicted upon the survivors forced a re-evaluation of the country's position. Despite initial skepticism within the government, the reports and eyewitness testimonies of the devastation caused by the atomic bomb could not be ignored. The situation further intensified with the Soviet Union's entry into the war against Japan. On August 8, 1945, just two days after the bombing of Hiroshima, the Soviet Union declared war on Japan and launched a massive offensive in Manchuria further eroding Japan's ability to sustain a protracted war effort. The combination of the atomic bombings and the Soviet offensive placed the Japanese leadership in an increasingly untenable position. The devastating power of the atomic bombs, coupled with the rapid advance of Soviet forces, created a sense of urgency and a recognition that continuing the war would only result in further destruction and loss of life. Amidst these circumstances, Emperor Hirohito convened an imperial conference on August 9, 1945, to discuss Japan's response to the mounting crisis. After a heated debate, the decision was made to accept the terms of the Potsdam Declaration, which called for Japan's unconditional surrender. The declaration had been issued by the Allied powers, including the United States, Great Britain, and China, on July 26, 1945, demanding Japan's capitulation or face prompt and utter destruction. On August 15, 1945, Emperor Hirohito made a historic radio broadcast to the Japanese people, announcing Japan's surrender. This marked the first time the Japanese public had heard the voice of their emperor. In his address, Hirohito called upon his people to endure the unendurable and bear the unbearable in order to restore peace and rebuild the nation. The surrender of Japan brought an end to World War II in the Pacific and initiated a new phase in Japanese history. The formal signing of the Instrument of Surrender took place on September 2, 1945, aboard the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay. General Douglas MacArthur, representing the Allied powers, presided over the ceremony, while Japanese representatives, led by Foreign Minister Mamoru Shigemitsu and General Yashijiro Yumizu, signed the document. The surrender had far-reaching consequences for Japan and the world. The immediate aftermath of the surrender saw the Allied occupation of Japan, led by General MacArthur, who oversaw the country's demilitarization, democratization, and economic reconstruction. Japan, devastated by the war and now stripped of its militaristic ambitions, embarked on a path of post-war recovery that would transform it into an economic powerhouse and a symbol of resilience and rebuilding. The surrender of Japan also had significant geopolitical ramifications. It marked the end of a long and brutal conflict that had engulfed the Pacific region and brought about the defeat of the Axis powers. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the subsequent surrender, shaped the global order, leading to profound changes in international relations, including the emergence of the United States and the Soviet Union as superpowers and the onset of the Cold War. Chapter 8, Global Ramifications, Shaping the Ethics, Science, and Geopolitics of the Nuclear Age the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6 and 9, 1945, respectively, reverberated far beyond the immediate devastation and the conclusion of World War II. The use of nuclear weapons marked a turning point in human history and unleashed a host of far-reaching ramifications with profound implications for ethics, science, and geopolitics. 
The first and most pressing question raised by the atomic bombings was the ethical and moral dimension of warfare. The unprecedented scale of destruction and loss of civilian life caused by the nuclear explosions sparked intense debates regarding the use of such devastating weapons. Critics argued that the bombings violated the principles of just war theory, which calls for the proportionate and discriminate use of force. They contended that the indiscriminate nature of nuclear weapons made them inherently incompatible with the ethical conduct of warfare. This led to calls for the development of international legal frameworks and treaties to prevent the use of nuclear weapons and promote disarmament. The bombings also brought into sharp focus the responsibility of scientists and the role of scientific research in the pursuit of destructive power. The Manhattan Project, which developed the atomic bombs, highlighted the immense power that could be harnessed through scientific knowledge and technological advancements. This raised profound ethical questions about the obligations and responsibilities of scientists in relation to the potential destructive applications of their work. The bombing spurred introspection within the scientific community and prompted discussions on the need for scientific accountability and the potential consequences of unrestricted scientific pursuits. One of the most significant global ramifications of the atomic bombings was the onset of the nuclear arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union. The bombings demonstrated the immense destructive power of nuclear weapons and underscored the strategic advantages they conferred. This led to a period of intense competition and rivalry between the two superpowers, shaping the geopolitics of the Cold War era. The United States and the Soviet Union embarked on a race to build larger arsenals, develop more sophisticated delivery systems, and expand their nuclear capabilities. The fear of mutual annihilation, known as mutually assured destruction MAD, characterized this tense period, as both nations sought to maintain a delicate balance of power through nuclear deterrence. The proliferation of nuclear weapons became a global concern as other countries sought to acquire their own nuclear capabilities. The nuclear genie, once released, proved difficult to contain. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki demonstrated the immense power of nuclear weapons and sparked a sense of urgency among nations to acquire similar capabilities for self-defense or geopolitical influence. This led to an expansion of the Global Nuclear Club, with countries such as the United Kingdom, France, China, and later India, Pakistan, and North Korea, joining the ranks of nuclear-armed states. The spread of nuclear weapons added new layers of complexity to international relations and raised concerns about nuclear proliferation, arms control, and the potential for regional conflicts to escalate into nuclear confrontations. Efforts to curb the proliferation of nuclear weapons and promote disarmament became central themes in global diplomacy. The Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons NPT, which entered into force in 1970, aimed to prevent the further spread of nuclear weapons while promoting disarmament and facilitating peaceful uses of nuclear energy. The NPT established a framework for international cooperation, inspections, and disarmament negotiations, and it remains the cornerstone of global efforts to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki forever altered the geopolitical landscape and the dynamics of international relations. The nuclear threat influenced diplomatic strategies, defense policies, and arms control negotiations. It also fueled a broader cultural and intellectual discourse about the potential for global annihilation and the imperative for peace and disarmament. The bombing served as a sobering reminder of the catastrophic consequences that could result from uncontrolled and indiscriminate use of nuclear weapons. The world had witnessed the unimaginable destruction and loss of life caused by these weapons, and this knowledge fueled a global movement for nuclear disarmament, peace, and nonviolence. It galvanized the efforts of activists, scientists, and policymakers to advocate for nuclear arms control, arms reduction, and ultimately the complete elimination of nuclear weapons. 
Chapter 9, Conclusion, Reflecting on Controversy, Consequences, and the Imperative for Peace. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki continued to ignite passionate debates and evoke strong emotions to this day. Proponents of the bombings argue that they played a decisive role in hastening the end of World War II, averting a costly ground invasion of Japan, and saving countless lives in the process. However, critics raise profound ethical questions about the immense destruction inflicted upon innocent civilians and question the moral justification for such catastrophic means. The controversy surrounding the bombing stems from the sheer magnitude of the devastation unleashed upon Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The loss of life, the physical and psychological suffering endured by the survivors, and the long-term consequences of radiation exposure have left a lasting mark on human history. Critics argue that the bombings violated fundamental principles of humanity, emphasizing the indiscriminate nature of nuclear weapons and the disproportionate harm inflicted upon non-combatants. The legacy of the atomic bombings serves as a stark reminder of the devastating power of nuclear weapons and the need for continuous efforts towards peace, disarmament, and the prevention of future catastrophes. The human suffering witnessed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki highlights the urgent imperative to work towards a world free from the specter of nuclear annihilation. Remembering the events of August 1945 is not only an exercise in historical understanding but also a call to action. The bombings stand as a chilling testament to the destructive capacity of humanity's own creations and the potential for untold devastation if such weapons are ever unleashed again. The lessons learned from Hiroshima and Nagasaki urge us to re-evaluate our priorities, strengthen our commitment to peace, and strive for global cooperation and disarmament. Efforts towards nuclear disarmament have been ongoing since the end of World War II. Treaties, agreements, and diplomatic initiatives have sought to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons, reduce existing arsenals, and promote peaceful uses of nuclear energy. The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons TPNW, adopted in 2017, represents a significant step towards a world without nuclear weapons. However, challenges persist, and the goal of complete disarmament remains elusive. The memory of Hiroshima and Nagasaki should not only fuel our commitment to prevent the use of nuclear weapons but also serve as a reminder of the power of dialogue, diplomacy, and mutual understanding in resolving conflicts. The bombings underscore the imperative for nations to seek peaceful resolutions, engage in diplomacy, and exhaust all avenues of negotiation before resorting to the devastating consequences of armed conflict. Furthermore, the events of August 1945 remind us of the profound responsibility that falls upon all individuals, institutions, and governments in the pursuit of peace and the prevention of mass destruction. Scientists, policymakers, and citizens alike must recognize the potential consequences of their actions and strive to foster a world in which the threat of nuclear weapons is eliminated and humanity's collective security is safeguarded. More information and facts. Part 1, Humanitarian Assistance and Reconstruction Efforts, Restoring Lives in the Aftermath. In the aftermath of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the urgent need for humanitarian assistance and reconstruction efforts became paramount. The unprecedented devastation called for a collective response to provide aid, medical assistance, and support to the survivors and to begin the arduous task of rebuilding the shattered cities. International organizations, such as the Red Cross, and various relief agencies played a crucial role in these efforts, navigating the challenges of the post-war landscape to restore lives and offer hope amidst the ruins. The immediate aftermath of the bombings presented immense challenges for humanitarian organizations. The destruction was widespread, with hospitals, medical facilities, and infrastructure reduced to rubble. Communication systems were severely damaged, hindering the coordination of rescue and relief efforts. 
Furthermore, the massive number of casualties overwhelmed the remaining medical personnel and resources. In response to the urgent need, international organizations, particularly the International Committee of the Red Cross ICRC, and its Japanese counterpart, the Japanese Red Cross Society JRCS, mobilized their efforts to provide medical assistance, supplies, and support to the survivors. The Red Cross established hospitals, medical clinics, and first aid stations in the affected areas, working tirelessly to treat the injured and address the immediate medical needs of the survivors. Medical teams from around the world, including doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals, volunteered their services and expertise to support the relief efforts. These individuals, driven by a sense of humanitarian duty, risked their own well-being to offer their skills to those in need. Their dedication and selflessness played a crucial role in saving lives and providing critical medical care to the survivors. The provision of basic necessities such as food, clean water, and shelter was also a priority in the early stages of the humanitarian response. Local and international relief agencies worked to distribute supplies and establish temporary shelters for those who had lost their homes. The challenges were immense, given the scale of destruction and the scarcity of resources in the war-ravaged country. However, the collective efforts of these organizations and the resilience of the survivors helped to alleviate some of the immediate suffering. The reconstruction of the affected cities was a monumental task that required the collaboration of various stakeholders. Efforts were made to clear debris, restore utilities, and rebuild essential infrastructure. Reconstruction plans focused not only on physical structures but also on revitalizing the economy and restoring the social fabric of the communities. The role of the survivors themselves was vital in the reconstruction process. Many of them, despite enduring tremendous personal loss and physical and emotional trauma, actively participated in the rebuilding efforts. They formed associations and cooperatives, pooling their resources and skills to reconstruct their neighborhoods and regain a sense of normalcy. These grassroots initiatives, combined with the support of local and international organizations, played a significant role in the recovery of the affected cities. However, the challenges in the reconstruction process were formidable. The scale of destruction, coupled with the scarcity of resources, presented significant obstacles. The task of rebuilding homes, schools, hospitals, and other vital infrastructure required sustained efforts over an extended period. Additionally, the lingering effects of radiation exposure posed ongoing health challenges for the survivors, necessitating specialized medical care and support. Despite these challenges, progress was made in the reconstruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The efforts of the survivors, local communities, and humanitarian organizations gradually transformed the devastated landscapes into vibrant cities once again. Schools were rebuilt, hospitals and medical facilities were established, and efforts were made to restore economic activities and employment opportunities. The humanitarian assistance and reconstruction efforts following the bombings were not only focused on immediate relief and rebuilding. They also extended to long-term support for the survivors, including the provision of medical care, psychological counseling, and social services. Organizations such as the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum and the Nagasaki Atomic Bomb Museum were established to educate future generations about the devastating consequences of nuclear warfare and to advocate for peace and nuclear disarmament. Part 2 – Scientific and Technological Advancements – Unleashing Knowledge from the Atomic Bombings the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki not only brought devastation and human suffering but also catalyzed significant scientific and technological advancements. The immense power unleashed by the atomic bombs accelerated research in various fields, including the study of radiation effects, nuclear physics, and medical treatments for radiation sickness. 
These advancements, born out of the aftermath of the bombings, had a lasting impact on subsequent research, medical practices, and the broader scientific legacy of the bombings. One of the key areas of scientific research that was propelled forward by the bombings was the study of radiation effects. The immense release of ionizing radiation in the bombings provided scientists with unprecedented opportunities to investigate the short-term and long-term consequences of radiation exposure on human health and the environment. Researchers carefully observed the survivors, known as Hibakusha, to understand the immediate and delayed effects of radiation, including the occurrence of acute radiation sickness, the development of cancer, and genetic mutations. These studies paved the way for a deeper understanding of the biological effects of radiation and the establishment of radiation protection standards that would guide subsequent research and practices in the field. Nuclear physics, already a burgeoning field during World War II, experienced significant progress as a result of the atomic bombings. The bombings demonstrated the immense energy released through nuclear fission, providing invaluable data for scientists to refine their understanding of the underlying physics. Researchers delved deeper into the principles of nuclear reactions, the behavior of subatomic particles, and the potential for harnessing nuclear energy for both destructive and peaceful purposes. The knowledge gained from the bombings contributed to the subsequent development of nuclear power generation and the exploration of controlled nuclear fusion as a potential energy source. Medical treatments for radiation sickness and the understanding of its long-term effects also advanced as a direct result of the bombings. Physicians and scientists urgently sought to develop effective therapies to mitigate the devastating consequences of radiation exposure. Research focused on developing drugs, such as radioprotective agents and hematopoietic growth factors, to counteract the immediate effects of radiation and accelerate recovery. The experiences of the Hibakusha provided invaluable insights into the long-term health effects of radiation exposure, guiding ongoing research into radiation-related cancers, genetic disorders, and the development of targeted therapies. The scientific and technological advancements resulting from the bombings also extended to areas beyond radiation research and medical treatments. The bombing stimulated research and development in materials science, engineering, and military technology. Scientists and engineers worked to improve the durability and safety of structures in the face of potential nuclear threats. This led to the development of new construction materials, advanced building design techniques, and the implementation of civil defense measures to enhance preparedness for nuclear emergencies. The broader scientific legacy of the atomic bombings was not limited to immediate post-war research and advancements. The knowledge gained from studying the effects of radiation exposure and the principles of nuclear physics laid the foundation for subsequent research and innovations. The field of radiation oncology emerged, focusing on the use of radiation for cancer treatment. Nuclear medicine also flourished, with the development of diagnostic techniques, such as positron emission tomography, PET, and radioisotope imaging, which have revolutionized medical imaging and patient care. The scientific advancements resulting from the atomic bombings also had implications for global security and diplomacy. The bombings brought to the forefront the potential dangers of nuclear weapons and stimulated efforts towards arms control, non-proliferation, and disarmament. The bombings served as a catalyst for international discussions and negotiations aimed at preventing the further use and spread of nuclear weapons, culminating in treaties such as the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons NPT. Part 3 – Controversies and Debates unraveling the nuances of the atomic bombings. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have remained subjects of ongoing controversies and debates, eliciting diverse perspectives and impassioned discussions. The moral, ethical, and strategic dimensions of the bombings have been scrutinized and debated by scholars, policymakers, and the public alike. 
Examining the different viewpoints and delving into the nuanced discussions surrounding the decision-making process and the alternatives considered provides a deeper analysis of the complexities involved in evaluating the bombings. Proponents of the atomic bombings argue that they were necessary to bring a swift end to World War II and prevent further loss of life. They contend that a ground invasion of Japan, which was anticipated prior to the bombings, would have resulted in even greater casualties on both sides. Proponents also highlight the determination of the Japanese military and leadership to fight to the bitter end, citing the fierce resistance encountered in previous battles as evidence. They argue that the bombings forced a swift and unconditional surrender, averting the need for a protracted and costly invasion. From a strategic perspective, Proponents assert that the atomic bombings helped to shape the post-war world order. The immense destruction and unprecedented power demonstrated by the bombings served as a stark deterrent to future conflicts and potential nuclear use. Proponents argue that the bombings played a significant role in dissuading the use of nuclear weapons in subsequent conflicts and contributed to the prevailing global peace during the Cold War. Critics, on the other hand, question the moral justifications for the bombings, emphasizing the immense human suffering and loss of civilian lives. They argue that the bombings violated fundamental principles of humanity and the principles of just war theory, which advocate for the proportionate and discriminate use of force. Critics contend that the devastation caused by the bombings far exceeded any military necessity and that alternatives, such as a demonstration of the atomic bomb's power or continued conventional bombings, could have been pursued. The complex decision-making process behind the bombings is also a subject of intense debate. Scholars and historians have examined the context in which the decision was made, including the political, military, and strategic considerations that influenced President Harry S. Truman and his advisors. The urgency to end the war, the perceived necessity to demonstrate American technological superiority to the Soviet Union, and the desire to save American lives in a potential ground invasion are among the factors that have been discussed. Critics argue that alternative options, such as a diplomatic solution or modifying unconditional surrender terms, should have been explored further before resorting to the use of atomic weapons. They question whether the bombings were primarily motivated by military necessity or geopolitical considerations. The impact of the bombings on civilians, particularly the targeting of densely populated areas, raises ethical concerns and challenges the notion of proportionality in the use of force. The debate surrounding the atomic bombings has extended beyond the immediate aftermath of World War II. It continues to be an area of academic inquiry, public discourse, and remembrance. Scholars and experts have engaged in nuanced discussions, examining primary sources, historical records, and testimonies to shed light on the decision-making process and its implications. Part 4, Commemoration and Remembrance, Honoring the Legacy of the Atomic Bombings The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have left an indelible mark on history, and their memory is kept alive through various forms of commemoration and remembrance. From the establishment of memorials and annual ceremonies to the powerful testimonies of survivors, these acts of remembrance provide insight into how the bombings are remembered and memorialized, both in Japan and around the world. In the aftermath of the bombings, efforts were made to establish memorials and monuments that would serve as enduring symbols of remembrance and reflection. The Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park, located near the hypocenter of the Hiroshima bombing, stands as one of the most prominent examples. At its heart lies the iconic atomic bomb dome, a skeletal structure that was once the Hiroshima Prefectural Industrial Promotion Hall. Preserved as a stark reminder of the devastation caused by the bomb, it serves as a symbol of resilience and a plea for peace. The park also houses numerous monuments, including the Memorial Cenotaph that lists the names of the victims, the Children's Peace Monument, and the peace flame that will continue to burn until nuclear weapons are eradicated. 
Similarly, the Nagasaki Peace Park in Nagasaki City encompasses various monuments and memorials dedicated to the victims of the atomic bombing. The peace statue, a prominent feature of the park, represents a man with one hand pointing to the heavens as a plea for peace and the other outstretched in a gesture of reconciliation. The park also includes the Fountain of Peace, the Atomic Bomb Museum, and the Nagasaki National Peace Memorial Hall for the atomic bomb victims, which serves as a repository of testimonies and artifacts. These memorials serve as spaces for reflection, remembrance, and education. They attract visitors from around the world, allowing them to engage with the history and consequences of the bombings, learn about the personal stories of the survivors, and contemplate the implications of nuclear warfare. Annual ceremonies are another significant aspect of commemoration. The Hiroshima Peace Memorial Ceremony, held on August 6 each year, brings together survivors, dignitaries, and citizens to honor the victims and recommit to the pursuit of peace. The ceremony begins with a solemn minute of silence at 8.15 a.m., the exact time the bomb detonated over Hiroshima. Speeches, musical performances, and the floating of lanterns on the Motoyasu River are among the events that mark the occasion. Similarly, the Nagasaki Peace Memorial Ceremony takes place on August 9, the anniversary of the Nagasaki bombing. It follows a similar format, with speeches, prayers, and a moment of silence at 11.02 a.m., the time of the bombing. The ceremonies not only pay tribute to the victims but also serve as reminders of the human toll of nuclear weapons and the importance of working towards peace and disarmament. The testimonies of survivors, known as Hibakusha, have played a crucial role in preserving the memory of the bombings and conveying their lasting impact. Their first-hand accounts provide a deeply personal and emotional understanding of the events and their aftermath. Through their stories, the Hibakusha bear witness to the horrors of nuclear warfare, emphasizing the urgent need for peace and the elimination of nuclear weapons. The Hebakusha have become ambassadors for peace, dedicating their lives to sharing their experiences with the world. Their testimonies have been documented in various forms, including books, documentaries, and oral history projects. The Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum and the Nagasaki Atomic Bomb Museum house extensive collections of artifacts, photographs, and personal narratives that convey the human stories behind the bombings. These testimonies serve as powerful reminders of the importance of empathy, understanding, and the pursuit of peace. Internationally, the memory of the atomic bombings has transcended national borders, leading to the establishment of memorials, exhibitions, and educational initiatives around the world. From the United Nations' call for nuclear disarmament to local initiatives promoting peace and reconciliation, communities have embraced the mission of preventing the repetition of such devastation. The bombings have become universal symbols of the catastrophic consequences of nuclear weapons, motivating individuals, organizations, and governments to work towards a world free from their threat. Part 5, Lessons Learned and the Pursuit of Nuclear Disarmament, a Global Imperative. Reflecting on the legacy of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it becomes evident that valuable lessons have been learned from these devastating events. The immense human suffering and the potential for catastrophic consequences have fueled global efforts towards nuclear disarmament, promoting the development of international treaties, arms control negotiations, and ongoing challenges in achieving a world free from the threat of nuclear weapons. The lessons learned from the atomic bombings are multifaceted. First and foremost, the bombings demonstrated the unimaginable human toll and the long-lasting environmental and health consequences of nuclear warfare. The vivid images of the destruction and the stories of survivors served as a stark reminder of the devastating power of nuclear weapons. This realization has driven a global recognition of the urgent need to prevent the use of such weapons and to work towards their complete elimination. 
The bombings also highlighted the imperative of international cooperation and diplomacy in addressing the global threat of nuclear weapons. In the aftermath of World War II, the international community was spurred to action, recognizing the need for a framework to prevent the further use and spread of nuclear weapons. This led to the development of the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons NPT, which entered into force in 1970. The NPT has been instrumental in curbing the proliferation of nuclear weapons and promoting disarmament. It has created a framework for nuclear weapon states to engage in negotiations and commit to reducing their nuclear arsenals. It also promotes peaceful uses of nuclear energy and safeguards against the spread of nuclear weapons technology. The treaty represents a significant milestone in international efforts to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons and serves as a foundation for global non-proliferation and disarmament initiatives. Arms control negotiations have played a crucial role in achieving progress towards nuclear disarmament. The Strategic Arms Reduction Treaties start between the United States and the Soviet Union, and later Russia, have resulted in significant reductions in the number of deployed strategic nuclear weapons. These agreements have demonstrated that dialogue, transparency, and verifiable arms control measures can contribute to reducing the nuclear threat. However, the pursuit of nuclear disarmament faces ongoing challenges. Nuclear weapon states, as defined by the NPT, continue to possess substantial arsenals, and the risk of nuclear proliferation remains a concern. The geopolitical landscape, characterized by tensions between nuclear-armed states and emerging security threats, poses obstacles to further disarmament efforts. Disarmament negotiations have encountered difficulties, and progress has been slow in achieving the ultimate goal of complete nuclear disarmament. Another challenge lies in balancing the security concerns of nations with the imperative of disarmament. Nuclear weapons have been regarded by some as instruments of deterrence, ensuring national security and preventing large-scale conflicts. The concept of mutually assured destruction MAD, has shaped strategic thinking during the Cold War and beyond, with the belief that the possession of nuclear weapons prevents their use. However, critics argue that the continued existence of nuclear weapons perpetuates a state of insecurity and that alternative security strategies should be explored. The pursuit of nuclear disarmament requires political will, multilateral engagement, and sustained public pressure. Civil society organizations, activists, and ordinary citizens have played a significant role in advocating for nuclear disarmament. Grassroots movements such as the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons ICAN, have mobilized public support and raised awareness about the humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons. In 2017, ICAN was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for its efforts to promote the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons TPNW, which aims to comprehensively ban nuclear weapons. The TPNW represents a recent development in the pursuit of nuclear disarmament. Although not yet ratified by nuclear weapon states, the treaty signals a growing international consensus on the need to eliminate nuclear weapons. It embodies the aspirations of many non-nuclear weapon states and civil society organizations that have called for a legally binding instrument to outlaw nuclear weapons and stigmatize their possession. The lessons learned from the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have underscored the imperative of nuclear disarmament as a global priority. They have driven international efforts to develop treaties, engage in arms control negotiations, and advocate for the complete elimination of nuclear weapons. While progress has been made, significant challenges remain, including addressing the security concerns of nuclear weapon states, maintaining international cooperation, and raising awareness about the humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons. We've now reached the end of our journey today, thank you for letting the tales of old be your backdrop and remember, history isn't just about the past, it's about understanding our present and shaping our future.